Happy New Year, guys! What's going on? Uh, so, instead of doing a quick movie review today, I thought since it's the new year, we're going into 2018, I thought I would do today the top 10 of my favorite movies of 2017. Um, now, I narrowed it down. There's a lot of great films this year. Uh, some really bad ones, some mediocre ones, some that just made me go, what the hell did I just watch? Um... But I've narrowed it down to 10 films that I really have enjoyed and that I loved uh, throughout this past year. Um, with that being said, I'm going to do two, uh, three honorable mentions uh, real quick. Um, the first honorable mention, I'm going to do Dunkirk. Uh, the reason why it's an honorable mention and not actually on the list is that it took me two views to really understand it. I saw it in theaters and I was like, ah, this is... Just another World War II movie. But after renting it a few weeks ago and re-watching it, I knew what was going to happen and it really was able to understand the whole thing. So, Dunkirk is actually pretty cool, but it does... It, the first viewing was definitely <laughs> more difficult to watch. Uh, the second honorable mention I'm going to do, Wonder Woman. And the only reason why Wonder Woman is not in the top 10 is because it's part of the whole DC universe uh that's going on movie universe that's going on right now the standalone film was phenomenal and it was really good especially since i was going into it thinking it was going to be total crap and it turned out to be pretty awesome uh so you know for what it was it was pretty cool um really great action and you know it it deserves to be in the top 10 but unfortunately because it's part of the batman vs superman garbage and had justice league trash I just, unfortunately, it's just going to be an honorable mention today. And the last honorable mention, I'm going to go ahead and say is Little Hours featuring Aubrey Plaza, John C. Riley, uh, the baby Franco. Uh, um, it, one of the funniest movies, I think, of the year. Uh, can't Didn't really get the great play that it probably should have. There's uh, some weird scenes in there and stuff like that. But there is some really fucking hilarious stuff in there, too. And so I really want to want people to go check out those movies but if not whatever so let's start off with number 10 number 10 it oh well, real quick i do want to give a quick heads up all marvel movies are going to count as one film on this list just to make lives a little bit easier and add some more films onto this list um so number 10 we're going to start off with the lost city of z featuring charlie hunnan and robert pattison uh both actors i have no respect for the pretty much think their TV shows or the Twilight series were both kind of stupid. So when I went into this film, I was just kind of like, yeah, this is going to be kind of lame. You know, mind blown. It was really fun, really cool. Almost kind of like a Tomb Raider, uh, Uncharted game-esque type movie. And so uh, Indiana Jones-esque kind of stuff. And it was really fun, great little ride. And I think it's on Netflix for free right now if you guys want to check that out. Uh, number nine is Free Fire. I think this movie was completely underrated. Um, Sh uh, Shalto Copley, Killian Murphy, Army Hammer, uh, Brie Larson, who is just becoming one of my favorite actors. They literally just... They do something in this film that I think is just really kind of cool. The dialogue that happens in between everybody shooting each other is some of the best dialogue I've ever heard in my life. And um, it's kind of like negative spacing. Like, you know, you've, you're you glaring at one character, Killian Murphy, and you're list, trying to listen to his conversation he's having with Army Hunter. Meanwhile, you've got two, three other characters having this other conversation. And so there's no music playing, and you're just hearing these people complain while bullets are flying and shooting each other. It's hard to explain, but it was so good. And I think it was completely underrated. Um, and with a great little ending, like twist ending that, you know, I didn't see coming out of left field. Uh, so that's my number nine. Uh, number eight, we are up to The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Um, this movie I actually saw twice in theaters. Uh, the first time I went with it, it was just one of those things where I sat down and watching it. And I let it all soak in. And afterwards... Uh, you know, you go home, you watch some YouTube videos, and really figure out what the heck you just watched. And then you go, I went and rewatched it, and man, it 
there it is an allegory a fable story that you know it's it's a tough situation to be put into um Colin Farrell does a great job. Nicole Kidman, what doesn't she do great in? Um, it's just, and the kid that play. I mean, it. the movie can really grip you and really rip you a new one. And it's very difficult to watch at times. Um, but it is very, very good. Um, number seven, we come up to Kong and Skull Island. Uh, I really like this one. Uh, I've always had a little bit of a... Uh, uh, soft spot for monster movies, um, like the Godzilla movie. I freaking loved that reboot, and it was just you know uh, Cloverfield was freaking phenomenal. And these monster movies have really kind of gr grown. I hated the King Kong reboot that Peter Jackson did, so I was really hope glad that they had the Kong aspect and all the greatness of what Kong is without the original King Kong story, which is great, but you know, this was something different and really cool. And with a great cast, once again, Brie Larson, awesome. She has had a great year. Glass Castle that she was in was really cool. Uh, Loki himself is not playing Loki, so that was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, Goodman and Samuel Jackson, great cast. Um, so, that was number, oh, uh, that was number seven. Number six, Baby Driver. All right, guys, so this one probably should have gone higher up. And I really have a hard time with this movie because I really do like this movie, but I don't know if I'm supposed to like it these days because of the Kevin Spacey allegations. He's still such a really good actor. And, I mean, I freaking love Seven. I love, you know, uh, Usual Suspects, American Beauty, Baby Driver. I love Baby Driver. But am I supposed to still like these movies that he's been in because of this crap? He's, you know, it's finally come out that he's a terrible human being, but... Ah, and so because of that, it probably, it went from being one of my top three favorite movies down to number six. I mean, this movie, it, it's so fun and action-packed, and it starts you off right away with some great yeah, dialogue, but no, of course not. Now, and music, oh, soundtrack, best soundtrack of the year, too. Just want to throw that out there. Ah, Baby Driver was really good. Awesome movie. Go own it, because you need to own it. But I guess be careful who you tell you like the movie, too, because you're probably going to get, you know, criticized for liking it. Number five, Marvel movies. Got four of them that came out. Yes, I'm including Logan in this. I don't give a sh care what everybody says. It's still a Marvel movie. Disney just got the rights to them, too. So, Coolio, I'm throwing it all in there in one. Uh, so we had Logan, which was, I think, the best out of all four of them that came out. Logan was just awesome. I loved the black and white noir style uh, version of it that came out on the DVD. Awesome. Uh, there was Spider-Man Homecoming, which was really cool. Little reboot of the whole Spider-Man, uh, you know, comic. Still not as good as my favorite Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, but still really good and really fun. Um... You had the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that came out this year. And who doesn't love Baby Groot? It was adorable. Um, plus, we had Batista's epic laugh, which was the greatest part of the whole film for me. <laughs> Loved it. And, of course, Thor Ragnarok, which was basically just a walking punchline throughout the whole thing. There was every once in a while a little fun stuff there and here and there. Um, Jeff Goldblum was really cool, but in the end, it was just clown shoes, if you ask me. It was just filler to make you remember who, you know, Loki and Thor are, and yeah. So, number five, Marvel movies. So, we go on to number four. This one was really good, and I... I get mocked about it, and I don't care. I love this fucking movie. Atomic Blonde. I love Charlize Theron. I loved the fight scenes in this, where she's just completely badass. I heard she trained with uh, Keanu Reeves for, from the John Wick movies. It was awesome. Uh, I, don't, I don't care what people want to say. Yes, it might not have the best reviews. It might not have the greatest refresh. I don't care. It was awesome. 
uh, it's I rewatched it like three different times since I've owned it because I just really just like the story and the action in it. And come on, Charlie Starrett is so freaking hot. I don't care. Number three, we are up to Get Out. Everyone's this is gonna be in top three for everybody. I think this year. Um, literally just a great story about you know society and racism in our society and how terrible it can be if your stomach doesn't sink at the end of this uh, before you like when those slides hit and your stomach doesn't sink i don't even want to know you that movie is intense and it really makes you wonder who you are and your aspects and all that other crazy stuff it's awesome but one of the best movies of the year and it deserves I, Jordan Peele deserves best director, I think, if you ask me. I, I That's my pick right off the bat for best director of the year. Jordan Peele, he did awesome with this. Uh, number two, this movie was my number one for so long until earlier this week, but number two is three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Yes, I know I'm a little homer here, and I'm doing this because I'm from Missouri, but no. This movie gets, right from the beginning, gets you hooked onto a person who's not the most easily likable. And you're on her side right off the bat. And you are rooting for this girl. And you are rooting for what she stands for. And I, it is just a dark comedy where you get trapped into this story. And all you want to do is just yell and scream and be like, what is wrong with you guys? Why aren't you looking at this? Why aren't you doing this? And then it takes another loop and another loop. And uh, I can't say enough about Three Billboards. It's a very good movie with some great humor, uh, very twisted humor, but at the same time, some very in-depth uh, sociological aspects. So take it as you will, but it moved, that movie was really, really good. And uh, Frances McDermott's going to win Best Actress, Actor, uh in a female role or something like that. All right, so number one, this movie took my breath away uh, um, earlier this week uh, when I went to go see it. The Shape of Water, number one movie of the year, guys. I can't believe how much I have talked about this movie since I've seen it. I love this movie. And guys, the art, like if you guys haven't seen my video on it, check it out. And then go see the movie. It is one of the most visually beautiful love stories I've ever seen. And I'm not even a big fan of love stories. Just look at the rest of this list. None of those have barely any love interests at all. And yet this one, it gripped me. And I was just hooked in this movie. Um, so... The Shape of Water was the best movie I've seen all year, and it took me all year to see it, literally. <laughs> um, so, that's my top 10, guys. Um, so, here's the 2018. I hope we got some great movies coming out. I cannot wait for Annihilation. That shit's going to be dope. A um, few other films I am really looking forward to, but, you know, they will all happen when they do. Um, subscribe! And leave me some comments about movies you guys thought should have been on the list that you don't agree with. Let's hear your opinion, guys. Or if you guys have any movies you want me to review, you guys know I love my older films, give me some comments, guys. And I will talk to you in 2018. Peace!